book is called How Full Is Your Bucket for Kids, written by Tom Rath and Mary Reckmeyer, illustrated by Mary G. Manning. Ooh, those are some good names. How Full Is Your Bucket for Kids? Felix was putting one of his last blocks on his tower when his little sister came in. I want to build with you, she said. Felix scowled. Go away, you're too little. I'm big. Stay back. You'll knock it over. I can be very careful. Go play with your baby toys, Anna. Felix. Thwack. Grandpa sh shook his head. Felix, you just dipped from your sister's bucket. Like everyone else, Anna has an invisible bucket. When it's empty, she feels bad, but when it's full, she feels great. Didn't you ever notice your own bucket? Invisible bucket? Hmm, sometimes Felix, Felix couldn't quite tell when his grandfather was joking. But the next morning, when Felix woke up, there it was, a small gray bucket floating above his head. When Felix came down to have breakfast, his mom was in a hurry. I've got a meeting this morning, and it's almost time to go. Anna, stay, sit still. Felix slipped, and choke of weeds scattered across the floor. Felix, yelled his mom, you should have used the spoon to read that. Felix couldn't feel his bucket tip and Felix could feel his bucket tip and big invisible drips spilled out. Drip, drip, ha ha, Anna laughed as he crushed the cereal with her shoe. Drip. Get the broom, clean that up before you miss the bus, scolded mom. With the school bus honking, Felix quickly swept up the chocolate wheat and grabbed the last blueberry muffin. But before he could even take one bite, it was still morning. Buster jumped up and grabbed the muffin from his hand. Drip. Hey, look at Felix's new backpack. My baby brother has one just like that. Drip. Puss, puss, Felix, puss. Drip. Watch out, shrimp. Drip. It was still morning and Felix's bucket fell almost empty. As he watched his classmates walk into the room, he secretly hoped they would trip and fall. That's what it feels like when you have an empty bucket. Felix slumped into his seat and waited for something else bad to happen. Miss Bon Nickel walked slowly up to his desk and handed him a paper. He could hardly bear to look. Felix, you want a wonderful story. Would you please share it with the class? Felix grinned and felt a big drop land in his bucket. Drop? The gigantosaurus who wanted a pet by me. Felix, drop, plop, plink. Drop. The class grew quiet. They laughed at all the right places and oohed at the scary parts. When Felix finally read the end, everyone clapped. Even Emily, who sat next to him and didn't usually like dinosaurs. Felix felt a whole shower of drops land in his bucket. Maybe the day wouldn't be so bad after all. Drop. Team Captain, today you. Team captains today are Victoria Nisi and Felix. <laughs> Drop. <laughs> nice cow. It's a dog. <laughs> well, nice colors there, Felix. Cool laser and backpack, Felix. <clears throat> By afternoon, Felix's bucket was nearly nearly full. At recess, when he looked around, Felix suddenly realized that his grandpa was right. Everyone else had a bucket too. Let me help you. Drop. Drop. Here. Here's your ball. Catch. Drop. Thanks, dude. Drop. Hi, I'm Felix. First day. Drop. Yes, I'm Amir. Drop. 
The strange thing was that for every drop, drop he held put in someone else's bucket, he felt another drop in his own bucket. When Felix burst in the door after school, he shouted, You were right, Grandpa! I do have a bucket and I understand how it works! Then he saw Anna's torn doll. Bad dog, he almost scolded. But then he thought, Dog might have an invisible bucket. Dog might have invisible buckets too. Your dog will be okay, Anna, said Felix. Mom will fix her. <laughs> Until then, do you want to help me build the tallest building in the world with my blocks? Also, and so they did.